In 2021, FreeSky released some really interesting new products, like the 3-axis gimbal extender, and many new product lines, like the Advanced Series Sensor and the Exact Series Servos. But today, we're going to talk about the new receiver, the TD R18 2.4 gig 900 meg dual band receiver. Today we are introducing FreeSky's dual band channel receiver, TDR18. When unboxing the TDR18, you'll firstly discover a manual card. This provides the manual which is now accessible via a QR code. The manual card lists some basic specifications on it. Scan the QR code to see the very latest detailed information on the product manual. A package of screws are included. A cable is included to upgrade the receiver firmware. The supplied switch can be attached and is used to switch the receiver power on or off. An external 2.4 gig copper dipole antenna. And a small size re-optimized design 900 meg antenna. 18 customizable channel pins. Dual XT30 power ports supporting 2S batteries. A socket for connecting the supplied on-off power switch or for connecting an optional NFC switch. Another socket port is available to perform firmware upgrade with the provided cable. The three fixing holes on the shell are used to fix the receiver to the model with the supplied screws. Scan the QR code with a mobile phone to read the very latest version of the manual. The PDF manual can be saved on the phone if needed. To upgrade the R18 firmware via S-Port using your radio, connect the upgrade interface on the receiver using the supplied cable to the S-Port on the radio. On the radio, choose Flash External Device. To upgrade via OTA, firstly make sure the receiver is in the bound state. Store the latest version of the firmware in the firmware folder on the radio. Please note, when you are upgrading a receiver, you need to repower it and select the receiver to start the upgrade. An info interface will be shown. This displays the current receiver firmware version. In this case, we can see the receiver is currently running the latest version. Before using the TDR18, follow this method to ensure that the Ethos system version is 1.0.19 or 1.1.1 and above and the RF firmware version is 2.2 or above. In the RF system, we select TD mode and change the number of channels to channel 1 to channel 24. Click register and then hold the binding button on the receiver and repower the receiver to complete the register process. Then we pick a receiver position to bind and then power off and on to select the receiver to complete the binding process. When the blue light is flashing and the green light is continuously on, this indicates the receiver is connected. The receiver has been designed with safety features so that if an abnormal switch failure occurs, it will not cause signal loss. Replug the switch. Notice the receiver is still in normal working state. For additional safety, even with the power switch turned off, 
Disconnecting the switch will not affect the normal working state of the receiver. Therefore, avoiding problems relating to any unexpected switch panel disconnections that may occur during the flight. The receiver will not work properly unless the receiver is reconnected when the mechanical switch is switched off. Also, FreeSky provide the optional NFC switch. The NFC switch can operate the power on and off by placing the magnetic key close to the NFC switch panel. The TDR18 adopts a dual power supply design and supports 2S batteries. When using dual batteries, the R18 power function always gives priority to the battery with the higher real-time power supply voltage in order to achieve the balanced consumption of two batteries. Through the telemetry values, we can see that the voltages of the two batteries are basically and dynamically the same. When using Exacts FBUS mode, we need to upgrade the servos to the latest firmware to ensure that it supports the TD-R18 FBUS mode. In the normal connection state of the TD-R18, select Set and then Option. Now we set CP1 and CP2 to connect to the exact servo in FBUS mode. And we set CP3 as the PWM channel, and then we connect another exact servo to CP3. We can see that the servos work properly under different protocols when connecting to the same TDR18 receiver. When we need to read the telemetry values of two or more exact servos at the same time, we first need to distinguish the physical ID and application ID of one exact servo from the other one. Firstly, enter the receiver setting interface and set the CP ports that need to be connected to the exact servo to FBUS mode. Then we connect the exact servo to the receiver one by one to set the configuration. Connect the first servo to the CP port in FBUS mode and then enter the device config menu and select exact to enter the exact servo configuration. After waiting for the first exact servo configuration to be read, we set the physical ID and the application ID of the servo to 01 at the same time. Then we need to unplug the first servo and connect the second servo to the CP port that has been set to FBUS mode. Then enter the device config menu again and select exact to enter the exact configuration again. Go to the telemetry interface and refresh the sensor device. We can see that the telemetry of both servos can be displayed at the same time. In FBUS mode, the exact servos support configurations such as servo travel degree, reverse rotation and subtrim of the center point. In the future, there will be more functions developed.
When using both S-Port and Advanced Series FBUS sensors at the same time, you need to link the sensors to the CP channel ports. In this demo, we connect the S-Port sensor to CP11 and the FBUS sensor to CP14. Then we enter the receiver's settings menu, respectively set CP11 to S-Port mode and then set CP14 to FBUS mode. After exiting and returning to the telemetry interface and refresh the sensor device, we can now successfully read the telemetry values of the two sensors.